Hello, I'm Philip Cosgrave from Yarra and we're up here in Feeney in Northern Ireland and we're currently here with the Killen Brothers Contractors. The Killen Brothers offer a slurry separation service and we're going to talk to Adam Killen about the advantages of slurry separation on farms and what that brings, the advantages it brings for that for farmers but also the implication it has on growing um, first cut silage crops as well because the nutrient analysis is slightly different to unseparated slurry. Um, so the likes of for some farmers would be like coming into the end of the winter period they would maybe um, think that it wouldn't really suit their situation as in being they wouldn't have any eggs to their tanks sitting empty but we have went to jobs where we have uh, so we've recirculated a big tank so we put it on took it out of one side and put it on the other end um, yes you're not getting the full potential You'll get the full potential of the machine at a certain stage. Of course, the volume of a tank will come into play. If a smaller tank, you'll get the return of the liquids pretty fast, or the bigger the tank. So we put it to the far end, and then that allows you to separate it. The solids comes out the belt. Then you make a decision being, she'll return the liquid and she'll do the solids. There's two separate departments. So the, the liquid phase pump will pump the liquid away. As the tank would dilute down, it means that the liquid phase pump will then increase but it also will maximize the belt, the solids that we'll see that goes out the belt. Now there will be a certain stage when them solids will deteriorate because you'll be getting so much volume of liquid that has been returned, working its way back down. But still, at that stage you can just stop, but you're still taking out a lot of dry matter, a lot of solids out of the tank. And Adam, why, you know, to start with, why are farmers looking to I suppose separate slurry. What's the main kind of reason that farmers are looking for well, more service? Drupal bars, to own shoes, it is the way for low emission spread now. It is the way everything's going now. So, in doing that, um, we are having a lot of pr troubles with uh, solids, uh, fibre on the grass after we spread it. So, you spread the ground. The ground's cleaned off, you spread it. Even if it's long grass, it doesn't matter. You spread the ground. After a certain period of time, the water or the rain will say will dilute the material down, but there still will be that fibre content yeah. in the grass, in the ground, sorry. After a period of time in our experience, it nearly has like a spider web effect. And as the grass grows, it then lifts the fibre back up again, which then means that the mower is shaving back off and bringing all that material back into the pit, which can lead to issues of fermentation, secondary fermentation, high ash content, all, all the above. So, um, and the second thing which we have also noticed is for storage. So, okay. if you have tanks that's quite thick, or you're having maybe a wee bit of issues, and you don't really want to wash it, run or spread straight away in February time, um, do you drop maybe the level of your tank? Of course, the thicker the material, the more fibre or the more solids. So you can really. Uh, for the room, it can really fluctuate between the thicker, the more room because you're taking the solids out, or if it's more diluted, dry, slurry, or more watery, you're not going to get the same content out of the tank with the solids. Okay, no, and, and what, say your actual solid material, mm -hmm. is that is that a type of material that you can stack up that it'll, you know, you can, you oh. know, is, it with, is there a lot of um, seepage still out of that material? None. or None. So, the way our we all separators or ours, I'll say, um, so you have a, like a pressure gauge, which is like a backing, like an air air strut system, where our separator is a big screw press. So it screws as as the material comes into the big screw press. There's an outer dimension of the screen, we'll say, which okay. is a half a mil screen. She then will screw the material out the far end and you'll have like a resistance from like a piston with an air pressure. So as the, the more pressure that you put the resistance on, the drier the material, because she has to still screw the material, the slurry, the raw material out of the, out of the press. The more resistance, the more you're drying it because it's harder for her to push past this. Yes. And then the more the liquid that you'll get, but you can have it that dry that it lets you fall out of the machine and blow across the street. It's that dry. Or you can have it, whatever material, whatever dry matter you really want it, you have that control. And what are farmers doing with that, with that material at the moment? So, are they... a couple of guys have it for other options. Uh, some guys are arable men, our maize guy, our maize. So they like to separate their liquid and use it on for the likes of their silage ground and their grazing ground. 
and then they use their fiber uh, for the likes of for of course maize and uh, arable love organic nutrients right. yeah. so then they spread it over it uh, at their own time so it means that they're not having to go and hire uh, it may they need a contractor or doing it themselves having to put a large consistency over the maize say and then plowing it down it just there's a lot of there's a lot of like liquid raw materials so you're plowing down muck and you know it's just a lot messier where they put their own dry matter down which means it's a lot easier to work with yeah. easier to work with and what like from from your perspective is is there advantages to i suppose you know actually spreading this separated liquid as well is it is it quicker spread times with brilliant yeah oh massively we we notice a massive benefit part of it for them reasons uh the the output is phenomenal you can know it's you can double it you uh, as in the reason being then that it's easier to drive you can pump it further you have more volume you know um even for the likes of the field after you're finished you're not lying with these if you're turning in the headlands i'm sure people have experienced with the dribble bars being around there's like a more concentrated area yeah. yes you can fluctuate the machine left to right but if i turn now with a thicker slurry there will be that consistency blob we'll just say yeah where when you go to the liquid that's gone it literally if you've a bit of cover in the ground at all you'll not even see it right. it literally just runs straight under the niche far quicker release of uh, nutrients into the soil all, almost immediately okay and like what kind of throughput with the actual separator what type of throughput would be are you seeing kind of in a in an hour or i suppose it depends on the raw material it, it all depends um say for a, for a beef farmer a heavy heavy feeding beef farmer planting a meal pumping you could in a thicker texture you could maybe chat in about twenty thousand gallons of there uh with roughly say eight or sorry anything between 8 to 12 ton of solids right depend probably what I'm just throwing out a lot of it's roughly an average is about 20 percent dry matter at that kind of tonnage and then you could go to dairy slurry which is a bit more liquidy um that you could maybe be putting out about 30,000 gallons to there of liquid and then also about 10 ton of right. solids at about 20 percent but that's that 150 it's quite a large machine but we like that we personally believe that size of machine all rounder suits us for the contracting side and for a farmer. The reason I say for a farmer is because if a farmer spends the time and puts his cows out of the tank and mixes it, and it's say if it's two hundred thousand gallon tank just for just for roughly, and he was uh, he was let me come on and separate and so he's, he's put the cows aside. He's mixed his tank. I've came the following day. He's given me a trailer or he's put it in the ground, he's put it in the shade or anything like that. I'm an inconvenience for a day. Maybe eight hours or nine hours, depending on how. But with that kind of output, that tank is only being, that full tank is being treated at a, at a day. So I'm an inconvenience for a day. If there's they come with a smaller machine, after two or three days, I probably would need to restore that tank, re-agitate it to get it mixed back up again. That one day of inconvenience could lead to three or four days inconvenience. So I do think, and plus because of the mobile machine, I don't have to pump all the tanks to a certain location to be treated. I can then move the mobile machine tank to tank, which I think is very, very good. Okay. And just to finally finish up, Adam, like, do you think, um, do you think the demand for slurry separation is going to increase? I guess there's the there's the whole issue of regulation, and I suppose trying to reduce. Um, I suppose phosphorus levels and mm -hmm. phosphorus inputs into onto onto particularly on, on dairy farms. But do you do you see that increase in demand? I, I personally do. I, I you know the phosphorus levels has become an, an issue for every guy everybody because of the soil indexes. But also including the benefits of being able to spread your ground at a later date because you're not worrying about the material being in the ground. So if you're cutting in a five week program and your silage, you're not rushing to get the story on straight away because you're wanting the fiber to break down and go on the soil. Grazing cattle, you don't have to move the cattle off the field. I do see them benefits of it as well. There is more things out there as in, if you didn't want your material, your fiber, I do think there is other options. There's so for the likes of arable men uh, that don't have stock for themselves, for the likes of digesters that can feed that material, create biomethane, 
there is them more options out there. So yeah. for me personally, I do believe it is uh, it is going to become more and more popular. Yeah, I do see these benefits. Adam, just an important point, I suppose, for farmers is that with the separated liquid is, you know, the, the response and how they use this on, say, silage crops. You know, in your experience, um, how is that working out for farmers who have been using this separated liquid to grow first cut silage crops and I suppose the implication with, with the amount of, of, of mineral fertiliser, bag fertiliser that they have to apply to grow the same crop. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience? Well, that? from our own experience, we we actually put on about 2,000 gallon of separated uh, slurry onto our own soil. Um, actually separating, actually uh, increased our nitrogen levels a wee bit, but because we took the soils out, it didn't that didn't really mean that we took all our, our phosphorus out of the slurry. There is still a percentage in the liquid as well. Um, really, the solids taken away was to get the fibre. We wanted rid of the fibre. Fibre was causing us any issues. So we just went down with the standard 2,000 gallons per acre and roughly about two bags of 40% uh, uh, nitrogen on the Arcelli's ground, which we believe was roughly probably more than enough because the, 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 the separated slurry went into the ground very quick you wouldn't have seen it the following day, and we were able then to uh, put the fertilizer on then, and that was all we really think we required doing our nitrate to, to grow that crop. No, and, and I guess it makes sense that you take the fiber out of the slurry, mm -hmm. that you're, you're basically, that liquid can infiltrate the soil quicker, yep, and then yep. you're, you're, you have lower emissions because you're trapping that, that um, you're not exposing it, it's not sitting on the top of the ground where you're That's going to have right. those higher ammonia losses and that ammonia and is nitrogen. Exactly, exactly, that is, and it's, in the soil, it's in the soil quicker and plus if say there was heavy shear to rain, in two or three days any normal raw fixed slurry you spread in the ground, it's still there after a week, so if you had a heavy shear to rain then you run into your issues, your wash off and all, with that liquid depending now if the ground's not saturated of course, but if the ground's in a Muddling state at all that's dry, it automatically sucks it on, and you wouldn't you wouldn't see that after two hours of bright sunlight in the soil. So I think even for the likes of uh, being washed off, eliminates all their problems. Like yeah, well that's a good good point. 